clear. When this brother spoke just a moment ago, I could not help. I think we're kind of about in the same age range, maybe. But, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. We, 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 we've been fighting these fights for a long time. That's right. And as I say to my constituents, and I, by the way, I do live in the inner city. And I see, I know, I understand, I see it every day in Baltimore. I live in the neighborhood where the wire is going. And have been in the same house for 32 years. And it's painful. I cannot speak for the Congressional Black Caucus. I'm not the caucus, I'm just one person. But I can tell you this, that when Ferguson happened, my wife, uh, my Rocky Moore Cummings, and I and about, what, about 150 other activists from all over the country uh, immediately said and wrote a letter to the president saying, we have to not be sending these weapons, military weapons, to patrol our communities. Yes. Yes. And if you have not read it, Hank Johnson, speaking of the Congressional Black Caucus, it's his proposal. And he's wrote a brilliant article. Matter of fact, he and I were talking about it today. And the thing about this, this um, Section 1033 law right. is it says that if you do not use these military weapons within a year, you got you got they'll take them back. That's right. Yeah. So what is happening is that these police uh, departments are getting these weapons. They then it's like a toy. It really is. And so they they, they feel like they got to use them. And so they go out there, and most of them are trained. First of all, they, they, don't, they, they shouldn't even be in our neighborhoods, period. But then they use them in a way um, that is just, is, is, is just criminal. That's the only way you can describe it. So, um, you know, I, again, I can't, I'm not here to defend the caucus. Um, but I know what I've seen. I know that I've been, and many times, harassed by the police. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife and I live, we have a house in D.C. and a house in Baltimore. And, uh, you know, right next door to us, we've seen some military style busting in the door stuff. Right next, literally next door at 5 o'clock in the morning. And so, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to continue to fight my fight. But I, I, back again, I think it is important that this fight continues. This revolution will not be televised. No, it will be brought up. No, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, this whole idea of taking away the right to vote. This is in your face stuff. Yes. This is in your face. And I said that all the time. I tell my constituents, you may not like this country, but at least having the right to vote. When people say, I'm going to take your right to vote, that's a major problem for me. Right. Major. When we see attacks on, you know, when I came to Washington years ago, I said, I want to expand people's rights. And what we have found is there's a constant effort, mm -hmm. successfully by the way, mm -hmm. to shrink people's rights. Mm -hmm. And so again, I think all of us have got to continue to move in this direction because we've got to, we have got to address this and I'm proud of it. I, I'd be proud of what's been going on. When, when, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> when, I, when I watched Rachel Maddow last night, I don't know if you saw it, but she did a panoramic view of all the protests that have been going on and how it's been a constant drumbeat. That's what's going to change things. And so I'm going to do my part, but again, I want to, I want to thank all of you. I, I, I'm glad I came by here. Because sometimes you need to be reminded of the struggle and be reminded of the soldiers that are in the Army.
Come on. That's right. And so um, I just want to thank you. I've been I've I've been inspired. You know. Right.